Was it a near-death experience that sort of inspired you to go and pursue your dreams? Can you go into what that was? Yeah, no, a uh, good question. I, I get this a lot. Um, you know, I, I think sometimes we have, uh, not sometimes, a lot of times, we have many fears um, with our willingness to do a certain thing. Uh, and sometimes it takes a big jolt, uh, it takes maybe a scare, or it takes um, a surprise, or some kind of major event in your life to make that decision to ultimately do what you want to do. Um, and I was in Brazil, I was training jiu-jitsu, um, I, I was married at the time, I was, uh, I got married young, I was like 23 years old, I was in uh, Brazil, and training jiu-jitsu, I, I was working a full-time job, but anytime I had time off, I would always go and train. I was preparing for a jiu-jitsu tournament, and as a kind of a workout, we'd always climb this mountain in Rio de Janeiro called Pedro de Gavia. Um, that's the same rock for so, so some of you guys have followed jiu-jitsu. That's where Holes Gracie actually died, uh, hand gliding. Um, and uh, anyways, uh, I, so I was there and um, I, we kind of went off the path a little bit and it was really wet and I had slipped and it, it's a pretty high mountain and um, there's certain areas where you're okay, there's other areas that are way more dangerous. I had slipped and I was going feet first down the mountain and I was sliding down the mountain, my friend went to grab me, I had like a tank top on and he flipped me around and couldn't hold on and now I was going head first off the mountain and uh, all of a sudden I felt a bunch of air underneath me and I was falling and it was probably, I don't know, maybe like a 20 foot drop, so a pretty decent drop uh, and I ended up falling on like a ledge, it was like kind of like a rounded rock and if I didn't fall on that ledge, I would have fallen like hundreds of feet. Uh, and it probably wouldn't have been good. I'm not sure I would have survived that one. Uh, and when I fell on that ledge, you know, it, it knocked the wind out of me. My friends who were up top, they couldn't see me. So they, they thought I had died. Um, and uh, one of them was crying. One of them was like freaking out. And I could hear them talking and I, I, it knocked the wind out of me. But like during that fall, I kind of had that like cartoonish type uh, life, like near-death experience where I kind of saw, saw my whole life flash before my eyes. And the one thing that really resonated with, like, with me was um, I can't believe I didn't follow my dreams. I can't believe I didn't follow what I really wanted to do. Um, I, 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 was, uh, I was married at the time. I ended up getting divorced uh, because of all these changes. But um, I was working a job that was okay, I wasn't really happy doing it, but I wanted to do martial arts full time. Um, and I was too scared to pursue it. I, I didn't know, you know, like my whole family, they wanted me to go off and be a lawyer. Um, you know, my friends thought I was crazy for doing it. I didn't know how I was gonna make money, so I was scared of that. Um, and anyways, I had fallen, I realized I was still alive and I just did a lot of thinking over the next two weeks and decided, you know what, um, I'm gonna pursue martial arts. Like if I'm able to wake up and, at the time, put on a gi, put on a martial arts uniform every single day and do what I love, I'll find a way to, I'll find a way to make it happen. You know, I'll, I'll figure it out. And um, I went home, and, you know, told my, my wife at the time, uh, told my family what I was gonna do and everyone said I was crazy and, um, Ultimately, uh, it led to mixed martial arts and, and that uh, changed my life. There were some tough years of sleeping on couches and uh, you know, not having a whole lot of money and uh, asking people if they could pay for my meals. But uh, ultimately, I uh, ended up figuring it out and, and it worked out well. Um, definitely a lot of adversity, but it taught me a lot. You know, I, um, I, I did a lot of growing up, a lot of, uh, a lot of maturing during those times. And, um, and almost everything I know is probably because of martial arts. How quick was it from coming back from Brazil after that fall to your first fight for first MMA? So I guess it was probably maybe like eight months to a year, something like that. Not yeah. long. Not, Not long. long. I mean, I had been doing jiu-jitsu for, I guess at the time, uh, six years, five years, uh, and then had my fight uh, shortly after that. So. So was it true in your third fight you got matched up against a really experienced guy in comparison to yourself? 
and you impressed so much in defeat in the decision loss. Dana White was present at the event, you impressed him so much that he offered you a spot in the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, I, I, I think like that kind of sums up my career in general is, uh, here Kenny, jump into the fire, figure it out. Um, and and uh, I oftentimes competed against people like way more experienced than I did. And while ultimately it didn't give me the best record that I would want, you know, it wasn't this pristine record uh, statistics wise, numbers wise, um, it did force me to learn very quickly. Um, so in my third fight, I fought Drew Fickett. Uh, he had like 28 fights at the time. And I had, you know, yeah, three or four or something like that. And um, Dana White actually was there to scout out my opponent for this show called The Ultimate Fighter. Um, we had an absolute war. That was like the first time I had ever been punched in the face in a, in a mixed martial arts fight. And, um, and it was just this back and forth battle. Uh, I thought I won, he thought he won. It was a split decision for Drew. And uh, Dana White came back to my dressing room and said, hey, we're doing this new show called The Ultimate Fighter. Uh, would you want to be a part of it? You know, have your brother interview you and uh, send it in.